You can feel it in the air. I haven't lived for long, but I can certainly say something is happening. People are wanting to discuss themes which they usually don't want to. The rest of the world is beginning to question these, these rigid beliefs we've had about consumerism and about the way we run our economy. I think the world is beginning to realise that there was a lot of greed and self-interest that has driven us to the state we are now. Whether it be an economic crisis, spiritual crisis, emotional crisis, the world is in a clear example that it does not know how to deal with itself. So surprisingly, there's a lot of opportunities, even in an economic context, to discuss some of these spiritual values that you know, society might be struggling with. In the Baha'i faith, there's a lot of writings focused on the development of mankind. The, um, the guardian of the Baha'i faith, who was the great-grandson of Baha'u'llah, said that this is a religion which belongs to the youth. And I think when he said that, he was referring to the great potential and the great capacity of the youth to really lead a faith into new frontiers. What is the purpose of Baha'i Summer School? Really, it's about community building and reconnecting with that spirit where you spend your days primarily occupied in three things. That's study, where you look at the, uh, the writings of Baha'i Faith or you hear speakers talk about particular themes and principles in Baha'i Faith. Devotion, which is this concept where you communicate through very different artistic forms, whether it be you know, you watch other people uh, do a performance or you study and, uh, sorry, we, you pray together in a reverent form. And then the final part of summer school, which a lot of the youth particularly enjoy, is the, the recreation where we, you know, we run around, play sports, and it's this wholesome uh, event where it really lends itself to all parts of, you know, your education, whether it be material, spiritual, and even physical. And summer school is, is a time of the year which most of the uh, um, Baha'is, and including those from the community who are Baha'is, often look forward to and uh, it's a great way to start the new year. But an equally important part of Baha'i life is how we serve and contribute the rest of mankind. Baha'is um, in general, and, and particularly so the youth, really share responsibility in, in trying to alleviate some of the world's problems. As Baha'is, we feel that Baha'u'llah has provided the sovereign remedy to a lot of the world's problems. And we feel that it is our duty to try as much as we can to afford the opportunity to others around us to to view these remedies and see for themselves if they will assist them in the struggles they go for. And these are all principles which begin in our faith. So I think that religion has a lot to offer in the solutions to some of the problems that the world is currently experiencing. When we get to the end of our life, God, our Creator, whomever you believe He is, and of course is Baha'is, so we believe it to be Baha'u'llah and God, will get to me and say, all right, Faya, what have you done? What have you done in your life? What can you show me is the product of your soul? And when I think about this train, I imagine that along this journey, there are many destinations, there are many stops. And if you think of it through time, each point in time is like a train stop. You know, your first stop is primary school. And you get off the train. And the purpose of this train stop is to fill your suitcase. When you look back on your life, which is something which I did, I thought, well, how many stops did I get off on? And what began to scare me was that more and more, day by day, month by month, I was going along that journey empty-handed.